Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and ski conditions. This is a snow before you go forecast for on the snow. And uh, first of all, let's just jump right into the radar and satellite. I'll point out a couple of things here. So that rich flow of moisture into the Pacific Northwest, that's been the big story over the last few days. The atmospheric river set up copious amounts of moisture up there. Very, very dense snowfall at only the highest of elevations up there. Well, it's going to come to an end. The very last piece of this is moving on shore and into the, actually into the interior. Now it's going to disengage and then move out as a low pressure. You can already see it happening with this arc of moisture moving into Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, down into Utah. And eventually that will move into Colorado, but there's an extremely large batch of wind associated with this in the atmosphere in the form of a strong jet stream. So a lot of this is just going to get blown around. That will affect accumulations. And also, of course, it will wind load a lot of slopes out there. So just be careful as we move ahead into the future. Um, let's look at the big picture here over the next five days. This is my snowfall accumulation map. And notice where most of the accumulation is going to be in where, where you see the color shades. And so we're talking Pacific Northwest into the northern uh, Rockies right there. And then that last low pressure that's part of the atmospheric river will move up into New England on Saturday and Sunday as a low pressure could spin up into a storm with some accumulation. It's not set in stone, but it's a possibility that we'll take a look at. Look how dry it's going to be through California on the other side, the warmer, quieter side of the jet stream as we kind of move through the next five days. And let's talk about the jet stream. So again, all that wind energy is right on the front end of that jet. It's the last piece, again, associated with this uh, atmospheric river setup that's coming to a close. So as we kind of move into the future, what we want to know is, well, what's on the back side of this? So we'll look at that, but look at that strong wind knifing in to Colorado and Wyoming on that, uh, that last piece of the flow. As we look at Friday, okay, there's another little piece of energy right here. There's another, if you will, low, and then there's another low behind that. So all of that will continue to cycle inland. By the time we get to Saturday morning here, there's a uh, low pressure moving into the uh, Wyoming, uh, Idaho, uh, Wasatch, and into Colorado uh, zone at that period. What's behind that, that translates through. There's another low right here on Sunday that moves into the Pacific Northwest. And look at that, you can see the jet running up into New England. So it's definitely supporting a some sort of storm system up there, um, which could have some snowfall. We'll look at that here in a sec. Let's look at the future radar as to where the snow is going to be. So again, I was talking about that one last low pressure spreading snow into the Tetons, Idaho, and eventually it does graze the Wasatch and also the central and northern mountains of Colorado, but there's so much wind associated with this. Again, I think accumulations will be impacted. Look at how quiet it is in California and across most of uh, southern Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona by Friday morning. Another storm, though, is rotating into the Pacific Northwest by Friday morning. And then that does throw a little, just a touch of moisture into the interior, but boy, there's not a lot associated with that. That will roll through Colorado on Saturday. And look how quiet it is across a large part of the west by Sunday morning. But another low hits the Pacific Northwest, keeps the snow going up into Banff and the interior. Then that low uh, rolls into Montana, the Tetons, and Idaho by Sunday afternoon. All right, so let's look at accumulation. We'll do this in a couple of different stages. I think right here by Thursday morning, this possibly could be the best powder to hit the next five days. And we're not talking about big snow, but... On the back side of that low, I mean, you know, by you, you wake up Thursday, you could be talking about some powder there in Jackson Hole, back into parts of Idaho, there's Big Sky, back into parts of Banff and the Pacific Northwest. So definitely take advantage of that and ski on Thursday. Now, as we roll into Friday, there's not a lot happening across uh, Idaho and uh, Montana and Wyoming and Utah and Colorado. It's kind of a, a quiet pattern right there. A little bit of extra snow comes in on Saturday into uh, some of those areas, adding an inch or two. Uh, the numbers in the Pacific Northwest and Banff will continue to rise as these new low pressures move in with the jet stream there Sunday morning. A little bit of new snow in Colorado by that time. And by Sunday night, 
the numbers do continue to tick up, especially up in the Banff area. We'll add a little bit in Jackson and a little bit into the Wasatch, but again, this is not blockbuster stuff for the lower 48. Pacific Northwest and Banff, those numbers will continue to move up. Uh, what about the uh, area of, uh, what about the Northeast? So again, the caveat is, let's see where this low ends up and how strong it is, but the potential's there for some decent snow. Uh, by the time we get to Saturday and Sunday, as that low slides up the coastline there, look to the interior, look to Vermont, New Hampshire, and northern Maine for the best potential. All right, thank you for tuning in here for this On the Snow Report. I always appreciate it. Have a great weekend.